Hey guys, Miss Gillian here. So, we are continuing our chapter book, The Case of the Mummy Mystery. So yesterday you guys listened to chapter 5 and you listened to chapter 6. So in chapter 5, called Halloween Fever, they're talking about how they're in their teacher Miss Gleason's class and they're talking about how all the fun Halloween activities that they did leading up to Friday, which was Halloween. So some of the things that she did was that she talked to the kids about how she's entering the pumpkin pie contest this year. They made little Batmobiles. They read a lot of stories. They did vocabulary word bingo. So they had a lot of fun for the week. And then at lunchtime, they started talking about how Joey's going to eat the worm on Friday. So their friend Eddie came up with this big idea, which leads us to chapter six called Eddie's Big Idea. So Eddie's big idea is that he's trying to get a lot of people to come and watch Joey eat the worm. So he suggests to Jigsaw that he's going to start selling tickets at a quarter apiece to come and watch Joey eat a worm. So then as they are going along, Mila and Jigsaw end up going to the library because they want to learn a little bit more about mummies and why mummies came to be. So they start learning about the Egyptians and that the Egyptians put their bodies in what they call the afterlife and it was their idea of heaven. So they start talking about the mummies and the grossest thing that the mummies did is that they scooped out the brain with a long spoon. Oh, I think that's really gross, don't you? Mm. So then the bell rang, they were done at the library, and they had to get back to school. So that leads us to chapter seven. I hope you guys enjoy. Chapter seven, Worms in a Box. Myla came over after school. It was the day before Halloween, and we had a lot to do. I went into my garage and got a shovel. What's that for? Myla asked. Worms, I said. We went into the backyard and dug for worms. My dog, Rags, watched us closely. I think he was hoping for a bone. I turned over a rock. Wow, look at all of them, I exclaimed. I asked Myla, which one looks the yummiest? Myla rolled her eyes. Joey, choose. Joey should choose, I decided. I'll give him a nice selection. Myla, we need a box or something. Myla ran inside my house and came back with a square box about three inches tall. Your dad gave it to me, she said. I scooped the worms into the box. I tossed in some dirt and rocks, just so they'd feel at home. That night, I got my costume together and shoved it into my book bag. I put the box of worms into a third street food market bag and went to bed. After I flicked off the light, my door nudged open. Clump, clump, clump. Rags climbed into bed with me. I held him tight and fell asleep, dreaming of candy and costume worms and mummies. The next morning, it was Halloween. Finally, I saw Joey Piganato at the bus stop. He seemed quite nervous. Are you ready, Joey? He nodded solemnly. I think so, he said. I patted my grocery bag. I've got a nice selection of worms for you, Joey. Fat ones, skinny ones, you name it. Joey stared into the bag. Can they breathe in there? He asked. Don't worry, I said. The worms are just fine. On the bus, Ralphie turned around in his seat and smiled at Myla and me. I learned a new poem yesterday, he beamed. Want to hear it? Not really, I said. Mila shushed me. Go ahead, Ralphie. My brother Justin taught it to me. It's pretty gross, he warned. We can take it, Mila said. You're supposed to say when you pass a cemetery, he explained. He looked out the window. There were no graves in sight. But this is a special occasion. Ralphie cleared his throat. The worms go in, the worms go out. They crawl in your stomach and out through your mouth. Your teeth decay, your body turns gray, and that's the end of a wonderful day. The poem was a big hit. Pretty soon, everyone on the bus was repeating it. I guess you could say we were just a bunch of poetry lovers. 
Our plan for Joey was set. He was going to eat the worm during afternoon recess. Eddie Becker said he'd already sold 11 tickets. I took out my journal and figured out the math. 11 quarters add up to $2.75. Now Joey could pay me with Bobby's dollar and still have money left over. Everything seemed perfect. Then disaster struck. Chapter 8. The Robbery It never could have happened on a normal school day, but Halloween was anything but normal. Total chaos, Miss Gleason called it, and I guess she was right. It wasn't a big day for learning. What did you boys and girls have for breakfast this morning, she asked. Basketballs? You're practically bouncing off the walls. We all laughed. Mrs. Gleason was pretty funny sometimes. A lot of the kids brought in their costumes. Some didn't. That's because their parents would pick them up for lunch. They'd go home, eat lunch, and get dressed. Then everyone would hurry back to school for the one o'clock Halloween parade. I hung my book bag on a hook. Because my cubby was so crowded with junk, I placed my worm bag on the closet floor. Parents started arriving at around 11 o'clock. Everyone complimented Miss Gleason on her costume. She was dressed up as a basset hound, complete with long ears and a white tipped tail. I got dressed in the school bathroom right after lunch. It wasn't easy. Fortunately, the janitor, good old Mr. Copablanco, helped me draw stitches on my neck and forehead. Finished, he finally announced. I stepped before the mirror. Needs blood, I observed. Mr. Copablanco rubbed his chin thoughtfully. I've got just the thing, he said, and rushed out the door. He came back whistling. Mr. Copablanco had a can of red paint and a brush in his hand. He added a few dabs of paint. Nice and gruesome, Mr. Jones, he said admirably. Good old Mr. Copablanco. I still had plenty of time before the parade. I was glad because I wanted to check on the worms. Maybe Joey was right. Maybe they did need air. I went to the closet. I looked low. I looked high. But my bag was gone. Who in the world would steal a box of worms? Okay, so I want you guys to tell me what happened and who do you think took Jigsaw's bag?